Hello and welcome to the Beefy Tech channel. Today's video will be about optimizing Call of Duty settings. I've done quite a bit of research on this topic as I play Call of Duty myself and I personally want to tell you all about what the best settings are. Now, to prove that I have done some research, I wanted to demonstrate something very interesting, in particular with Call of Duty settings. So I'm going to use this exact spot and I'm going to leave the frame rate right there. You can see that it's currently varying between 254 to 257 ish frames per second. Now, if you go to settings, and go into your graphic settings in the uh, quality tab you're gonna see the particle uh, quality and particle quality level be on high despite a lot of my other settings being on low and don't worry we'll go over these in a second but I wanted to just demonstrate the little bit of research I've done now these are on high because high actually gives more frame rate in Call of Duty than, uh, than low does so check that out you saw the amount of frames we had before we're gonna go to very low and apply settings now we're gonna be looking in the same spot and notice how we just lost frame rate by going to the very low settings on particle quality and particle lighting. This was the same case as in the very first game, so I decided to try it here and it turns out to be the same. Now, I'll begin and show the rest of the graphic settings obviously, but very important, particle quality and particle quality level should be on highest possible settings, because they offer the best FPS. Anyway. First things first, let's start with the display tab. Here I'm running full screen borderless due to the recording. It's easier to record and switch between screens with this, so I highly recommend full screen borderless for recording, but otherwise just keep it on full screen exclusive, it's generally the best. It doesn't actually affect any latency, but it makes it easier to record. Anyway, for all of these, always turn off vsync, I mean you could leave it on in the menus because it doesn't matter, but turn it on off in gameplay, and for custom frame rate, I generally leave it unlimited. I've seen videos that show best latency in Call of Duty is with limited frame rates, but that is honestly marginal and barely noticeable. Anyway, for all of these, they don't particularly matter. Brightness is preference, and uh, this, leave it on automatic, it'll generally just be off unless you have an HDR monitor. Anyway, moving on to quality, here's when the important stuff starts. For the render resolution, you're going to want to be on 100 most of the time, because if you change this, there's actually noticeable input delay if you set it lower or higher, as the GPU has to do extra work to be able to render in a resolution that isn't one with the monitor. So this, generally keep on 100, don't listen to other people that say you should put it on 125 or 75 and then use sharpening, leave it on 100 and use the other options to get better FPS. It'll look better, it'll be more responsive. Most important thing here, is upscaling, sharpening. All of these do a bit of something. The NVIDIA DLSS and AMD FSR give extra frame rates, and I wouldn't recommend any of the other ones, except Fidelity CAS. Fidelity CAS makes your game look significantly better. Ten times better, I'd say, even. Uh, without actually affecting your frame rate. So it's better than AMD FSR, which gives extra frame rate, but absolutely destroys the visuals, and for Warzone, it's not even usable, I would say. So Fidelity CAS, with ideally 60% is easily the best choice. You could go higher or lower based on preference, but this makes the game look significantly sharper, significantly cleaner. Uh, I would like to demonstrate it, but unfortunately YouTube compression makes it to where this would probably look the same between 4K and 1440p quality, so I can't really do much to demonstrate it, but you can test on your own personal rig. Anyway, next thing next, anti-aliasing. I recommend always running SMA 2X instead of Filmic. Filmic absolutely destroys frames, looks a bit better from what I understand. It smoothens things out rather, but SMA 2, uh, T2X is the best with the quality on low. Leave it like that, best frame rate, it won't particularly affect you, especially if you're running Fidelity CAS. Anyway, the video memory scale, set up the max, unless you have a really crappy GPU, in that case you could set it slightly lower than the default 85% because it does default to 85, but I would leave it to 90. For texture resolution, I recommend normal. It's the best of both worlds. It doesn't look like this, but neither does it look like this. It will just be the best frame rate for the best looks. And as a trope, you can turn to low. It doesn't affect you in any way, shape, or form. You wouldn't even notice the difference in quality. Helps frame rate a little bit. Nearby level of detail and distant level of detail, I highly recommend to keep on high, because this will make it to where operators can actually spawn, uh, spawn in at uh, longer distances, to put it that way. And for the nearby level of detail, it just helps with having things not look terrible. For clutter draw distance, you can actually make this short. Uh, it says that it has small ground effects such as ground foliage, rocks and that. You don't want to see foliage at distance, you want to see the operators. So you can keep this to short and it's better than long, as things won't spawn in and you can see the operators better. For particle quality and particle quality level, we've spoken about it, leave it on high, more frame rate. 
Anyway, shader quality you can leave on low, tessellation low, terrain memory max, and the on-demand texture streaming off. These aren't particularly important, leave them to these settings and you're going to get the best frame rates for the best visuals. Anyway, volumetric quality is extremely important because if you have this on anything other than low, it will hurt your FPS by quite a bit. For deferred physics quality, also in water co uh, caustics when you're near water. These three all hurt FPS quite a little bit. Water caustics is only specific in water, but as it is, water already hurts frame rate a lot, so you really want to turn this off for the best visuals. But it might make it where it's a bit harder to see people in water, I have noticed that. But it's still better than dropping double the frame rate when you're near water. Regardless, for the shadow map resolution, leave it on low. It doesn't particularly affect visuals as much as it says it would, it just makes it easier to see people. Mm, screen space shadows you can turn off entirely, it's pointless for a competitive game. Spot shadow quality you can leave on low, and spot cache you want on ultra. The reason you want this on ultra is because it puts more textures in cache, allowing more frame rates essentially. It's a good thing to have on ultra. Particle lightning is completely different from the quality of the uh, other thing, the one we were talking up here. Uh, in this one, you want to have on low for the particle. Uh, sorry, where it is? Particle lighting. Ambient occlusion, for some odd reason, absolutely destroys frame rate too. And by absolutely destroys, I mean it tanks it quite a bit for only making it harder to see people. As you can see, even in their own image to demonstrate ambient occlusion, if there was somebody in this corner, he would be 10 times easier to see than if he was in this corner where ambient occlusion is turned on. So you want ambient occlusion off. Now here it says that it has other quality settings, you can just turn it off and not have to worry about it. For all of these, screen space reflection, static reflection quality and weather grid volumes, you want lower off, because these all hurt frame rate and make it harder to see. This is the quality of reflections it says, but all it does is it tanks your FPS without you actually gaining anything from it. For NVIDIA low reflex latency, there's actually a little secret. You want to go into the NVIDIA settings in the desktop and enable low reflex latency from there and not turn it off in, uh, on in-game. This does actually help, by the way. So if you turn it off, on from the NVIDIA settings, it helps. And you can turn it on here too, but COD has had a history with implementing this extremely poorly and only causing FPS drops instead of actually reducing your latency. Anyway, I will quickly demonstrate how to do that. So you have to go to desktop and then you have to, one sec, let me see, show more options. This is Windows 11, mind you, so it might be a bit different for Windows 10. Go to NVIDIA Control Panel and open it up. Once the NVIDIA Control Panel is opened up, you quickly go to Manage 3D Settings. And over here, you're going to see that you can turn on your... Let me see how it's called again. Low Latency Mode. There we go. Now you have to look for this Low Latency Mode. And you have to go here and turn it on. Once that is turned on, you technically speaking, you just have to click Apply and that low latency mode that was in game is now applied to the actual whole desktop and it'll work for every single program that is being run off your NVIDIA graphics card. On that note, back to the Call of Duty settings. Depth of field you want off, motion blur off, weapon motion blur off, film grain off. These are all completely useless, you don't want them on. Another very important thing is obviously the field of view and ADS field of view. You want this on affected and the weapon field of view on wide with third person field of view on 90 bigger is better here. Vehicle field of view also on wide. That's how I prefer things. Now the only really important ones are obviously having this on your preferred setting anywhere between 110 to 120 is best generally. And the ADS field of view being on affected. Now the first person camera movement and third person camera movement you also want on least. This is less camera movement so it's after all only better because it will make it easier for you to see. So I just left both of these on least and 50%. Now I know some people might ask, how do you have all of these here? Call of Duty actually hides the interface telemetry very well. It makes it very hard for people to find it. So to find all of this stuff that I have up here, you just have to go to interface, scroll down, find telemetry, and then click show more. And then you're going to be able to enable whatever you want in the telemetry. You don't have to have obviously all of these as I do, but yeah, they just made it really hard to find this, so I thought I'd show people as part of the settings video. Anyway, on that note, these are the settings I run at. This is obviously just a private match. You can see I'm recording now too, and I'm recording at high quality. And uh, I'm on a 3080 with a 5800X 3D. And at 1440p in those settings, I'm getting roughly 230 FPS without recording, and 213 to 215 while recording. So, um, 
this is the quality I'm recording at too. It's pretty decent quality. It's not anything spectacular, obviously, but uh, it does the job. And uh, if you want to look back at my settings video for recording, I just made a video the other day about the best settings for NVIDIA Shadow Play recording. With that said, thank you for watching and see you again soon.